So what we are here today is to talk about uh, a program called Knox Customization. Um, and, and just as a way of introduction, my name is Ram Modipali. I'm based here in Santa Clara, uh, part of Samsung Research here in the US. Um, and I've been involved with the program since it's been announced April uh, this year, earlier this year. Um, so we have about 45, 50 minutes, 40, 40 minutes, 45 minutes. So, and then there's some time for QA, Q, uh, Q and A. Um, what I would like to do is quickly go take you through some slides, maybe 20 minutes, <clears throat> and then um, we have a couple of, um, uh, you know, colleagues and part one colleague and one person from a partner company who I'd like to invite up here, and then we're going to have uh, a quick chat and also show you a demo. Um, of one of the solutions that we have. Um, so hopefully it's enjoyable and you guys see, you know, like what you see and enjoy and, and have a good productive 45 minutes. So with that, <clears throat> so today if you look at mobile devices in the enterprises, um, what you hear a lot about is what you see here on the left hand side, right? Employees get mobile devices um, <clears throat> and these mobile devices are used for productivity applications. So basically PIM, email, calendar, contacts. And if the enterprise is progressive enough, then they will have business applications which they deploy, right? And this is where you hear all the fancy terms like BYOD and CYOD, and there's so many of those acronyms that you hear about. Um, <clears throat> a great space, um, very exciting. Uh, even from a Samsung Knox perspective, we have a very large play in this segment. But what we're going to talk about today is a little bit of what's here on the right-hand side, which is single-purpose devices or appliances. So enterprises also have either employees who need to perform a certain function, um, either it's, uh, if it's a restaurant, then people taking orders in the restaurant. If it's fleet, any kind of logistics or fleet management kind of a business, then you have people carrying devices. And these mobile devices help them perform the job um, more efficiently than you know, previously when there were no mobile devices. Um, if you look at what are the main drivers behind each of these scenarios, in the productivity scenario, it's more about consumerization of IT, which means we have these great new devices that are coming out. Refresh cycles are 18 months, maybe two years. And then IT is trying to keep up and with all the innovation and make sure that their data is secured, you know, made available on these devices. Um, as I said, it's predominantly PIM and some business apps. And there's a lot of emphasis on data protection. So the mobile device is an endpoint, but the data is what is more important. Whereas in the single purpose appliance scenario, it's traditionally custom hardware or single purpose built hardware, any kind of devices that you would see with uh, the UPS delivery guy, the FedEx delivery guy, or you know, even people at um, rental car centers, those kind of things. They're all custom hardware. Uh, they typically have very long life cycles. These kind of devices last 10 years, 15 years, something like that. Okay. Having said that, um, in all our discussions with our customers, there are two things that we really see. Two, two paradigms. One is that the high cost of the custom hardware is not sustainable. So people want to replace them with devices off the shelf, commercial devices off the shelf. Why? One is cost, obviously. And the second thing is that's a way to keep up with the pace of innovation because there are new consumer devices coming up every 18 months, 24 months, and maybe shorter cycles. Right? And the other paradigm is the enterprises care about the whole solution. They don't care so much about the hardware. Now, if you use commercial devices off the shelf, then you could have a solution which, is, which lasts long, like 10 or 15 years, but the hardware, in this case a tablet or a phone, could be replaced every two years or whatever time frame. Much shorter type, uh, cycle than the custom hardware scenario, which means they can keep up with the innovation. So these are the two paradigms that we are seeing right now uh, in the industry with discussions with all our customers. This is what we're seeing. Um, having said that, 
just a, an introduction about customization and how it fits among all the other things that we do um, under Knox. Um, if you guys have attended some of the previous sessions on, on Knox, you would have heard about uh, Knox standard SDK, which is this one. Uh, this provides basic APIs and we publish an SDK, which most MDM and other development partners write features into their console, which means how do I password policy, how do I create the Knox container, how do I deploy email inside, how do I deploy other business applications, so on and so forth. Then we have Knox Customization SDK. And the value that Knox Customization SDK brings is it allows you to customize these commercial devices. And I'll get into a lot of detailed examples of what it really does. But to put simply, if you had a tablet and you want to have a lockdown kiosk mode, or if you want to remap the hardware keys, like volume up and down, should perform some other function. Um, or you want to disable uh, the status bar, or you want to remap the home key. These are all things that the customization SDK can very easily provide uh, as tools for developers. So if you're a system integration partner, you're building these kind of solutions for any of the verticals that I mentioned, these are really powerful tools. And finally, we have the Knox customization service, where if there is a real need for you to have a custom binary on a Samsung device, then we can write that custom binary for you. Um, big difference being, this follows the same stringent QA process that we follow before we, we release consumer devices. So which means your device is not really, you're not flashing the device and loading another binary. This is an official Samsung binary that you get, which follows the entire same um, QA process. So Knox Customization is a combination of the SDK, which is, think of it as a tool, and a service, which is the custom binary service. And a combination of these two allow you to do things which are not possible, uh, which have so far not been possible with consumer devices. That's the quick summary of what Knox Customization is. <clears throat> so the goal, as I've just been alluding to, is to take Samsung devices, tablets and phones, uh, and customize them, transform them into single-purpose devices. And every uh, vertical or every industry would have their own requirements. They would have their own third-party apps or solution. And we integrate with those solutions and provide these tools and services to do that, which means now you can take uh, the latest and the best Samsung device off the shelf and configure it to be a single-purpose device. And as I said, this enables never before possible modifications to the device. Some examples, uh, this is an in-restaurant device which can replace a gaming device. It can also be um, an ordering system where you can order foods and drinks because that's what people do when they're in a restaurant. Um, this is for behind the desk. It's a mobile ordering system. Um, say you're at a coffee shop and then you, know, you have a person who's taking an order on an old device like a you know, a custom-built hardware can be replaced with a Samsung tablet. This is uh, in-room uh, control, um, climate, lighting, music, audio, video, all of those. Once again, you can achieve the same effect on a Samsung tablet using the customization tools and service. And in-flight entertainment system. In fact, this is the demo that we have for you. Uh, hopefully, it'll be exciting enough uh, to, for, for all of us. And we'll also talk about how this is really reshaping the whole in-flight entertainment system. Okay. All right, so these are some of the examples that I was talking about. Um, we have numbered each of these modifications that we can identify, and they're color-coded so you can make out which one is possible with the customization SDK and which one is possible using the custom ROM or the custom binary service. Um, Remap hardware keys, either it's volume or menu or, or power keys. They can perform any other function once they're inside the app that a partner would want to write. Um, <clears throat> remove or disable or completely customize the notification bar. Um, add or remove options to the power menu when you press the power button. So in this case, 
you could want you would want to have a contact us option because if it's a custom lockdown device and a custom app um, or if there's another mode you want the device to boot up in in this case it's called sealed mode it could be secure mode whatever you can think of um, uh, adding drivers um, either preloading custom drivers uh, to achieve things like a faster charging rate sometimes if you are having hundreds of devices in a store you know the time that it takes to charge them becomes becomes an issue so you would write solutions or have custom hardware which allows you faster charging so which means you need some custom drivers on the device that is also possible um, preloading apps um, locking down apps into a particular so the device boots up only into that app that's another thing that's very commonly requested um, suppressing notifications right either volume when you plug a um, a headphone or any other jack, like a mag stripe for a credit card swipe. If you plug it into the into the into the volume, uh, uh, then the volume message shows up and says, "Hey, you know, if you listen to music at a very high volume, it will damage your ears," which is totally irrelevant to the use case at that point. Um, even things like um, uh, 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 the battery. So once your battery goes below 20%, 15%, if you're aware of this on Samsung devices, it'll, show, it'll throw up a, a, a box which will tell you, hey, your battery is running low, but it also has an option to get into settings. So that could be a backdoor through which people get into the settings, and then you know, it'll, once you're in settings, then you, you, know, you could have a teenager in, in a restaurant play with the device. So these are the things that, you know, those kind of scenarios which this addresses. Um, Mapping an application to a, to a home button, I just talked about that. This is just a, a sample of some of the possibilities. Right? It's not a finite list. It's, uh, the tools enable you to be as creative as you want to be. Okay. Um, these are some of the target areas. So we have seen a lot of uh, traction, interest, customer interest in areas around um, uh, point of solutions in a retail and a sales um, a scenario. A uh, lot of logistics um, uh, in the logistics industry. Uh, In-flight entertainment, as I, as I mentioned, and we'll talk about it just a little bit more. Um, hospitality, um, you know, lockdown devices in a restaurant setting where people can play games as well as order food. It seems to be something very popular right now. Um, Healthcare is another very interesting uh, opportunity because here you could have um, devices which either doctors or, or, or clinicians or any, any, any staff who has to deal with information and they don't want it to be a generic off-the-shelf tablet but lock down, have security, uh, maybe always be on a VPN, all of these kind of things. Uh, are some things that you know you would see in a healthcare industry because particularly with data going up and down and HIPAA compliance, that becomes a big uh, big requirement. And we always have the standard enterprise uh, scenario where you would want um, you would have enterprises want to give out these tablets. They could still be used for email contacts and some business applications, but the industry or or the business in which they operate could dictate that it had to be locked down, in which case customization is, uh, is in a situation where you can leverage customization with all the capabilities that we have with the Knox workspace and EMM, other suite of products that we have, and then you can have a solution which is uh, uh, you know, a combination of both. Um, so this is a quick, uh, once again, it's, it's, it's a very small list. Uh, the, the opportunities, as I say, are much bigger than this. But what I would like to talk about on this slide is uh, Samsung with any particular partner, a system integrator, or if you're a third-party solution or app provider, the idea is we could work together and use the Knox customization tools and service to address these kind of scenarios. So entertainment, uh, predominantly for uh, consumption of content, uh, movies, TVs, games and their protection of content becomes very important. Um, so you do, you do not want to be in a situation where because there's a tablet changing hands every few hours, content is stolen, leaked, or you know, willfully stolen. So um, advertising, which means uh, digital signage where you could lock down the tablet and have it in a store uh, kind of environment where people could you know, 
see advertising, but at the same time, you wouldn't want uh, a kid to go play with it and you know unlock it and you know start playing Angry Birds or, or something like that. So Angry Birds. I'm, I'm, it makes me sound old. I think Angry Birds is from five years ago, right? It's Candy Crush now. Maybe something else. <laughs> 2048. Um, uh, the other interesting scenario is uh, hospitality. I just touched upon a little bit. Building management. So where you would want um, employees walking around in a building, uh, either a warehouse or, or, or a factory or, or, or a large hotel building, but have access to uh, controls from the tablet. So um, either it could be controlling the endpoints directly, or it could be just you know gathering data and communicating to a server. Both of those use cases were in a in a uh, in a scenario where there is building and facility management. These mobile devices can play a big role. And once again, it's data control, um, so you wouldn't want it to be uh, an open-ended tablet where anybody could plug in something and you know, manipulate controls, you wouldn't want to that. So uh, having a locked down device or a tablet makes a lot of sense. Okay. Um, <clears throat> these are some of the enablers. Uh, so as I said, uh, the SDK is something that you can just sign up for uh, as, as a development partner. You could, uh, it comes with instructions, a list of APIs, all of those things. And then you can start developing your apps uh, accordingly. And this is usually targeted towards a system integrator. Though there have been instances where we work directly with customers too. Um, uh, FOTA is our term for uh, over-the-air upgrades, firmware upgrades. So uh, this is possible uh, with customization SDK. Uh, but if you write a custom binary or a custom when you use the customization service, then those are disabled because you know it's a custom binary. Getting an over-the-air upgrade is probably not what the customer would want. Um, the custom uh, binary service usually takes about eight to 10 weeks. As I said, it goes through our entire QA cycle because it's not just any other binary that you're flashing onto a device. It's a Samsung approved firmware. So it has that kind of a time frame to it. Um, and as we said, because it's a custom binary, it has to be uh, done by a Samsung approved entity. Right. Um, probably touched upon most of these. So yeah, this slide is important because uh, I want to make the point that with the SDK, you predominantly get all the app level, UI level, or UX level modifications or customization. With the custom customization service, you can go a little deeper and write the entire binary, as I said, or, or a ROM or an image. Um, what both of them do not include is any kind of hardware level customization. So just want to be sure that these are devices where the hardware is fixed, frozen. We can play with the software, but we really cannot modify any of the hardware. I mean, there might be some special cases where we could have a discussion if there's a real need. But generally speaking, that's out of the out of the you know out of the the, the purview of what Knox Customization can do. Okay. Um, so these are some benefits. I've touched upon some of these, so I'm not going to read through all of them. Um, the one thing that really uh, is very exciting for me and all my colleagues when we meet with our customers is they say, hey, we like this and we want to work with you because you're Samsung, you have global coverage, you have um, a, 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 a range of devices, different screen sizes, different price points, which makes it very easy for them to pick what really makes sense for that application. Um, I talked about cost and how hardware um, uh, customization uh, the custom hardware, which was prevalent a few years ago, is high on cost, and this is, a, this is, this is one of the very key uh, benefits that come out of this. Um, I did touch about the wide, cha uh, wide choice of devices. Um, we did talk a little bit about this, so there's a lot of, kiosk mode is one of the terms that we use, but a lot of customization, a lot of flexibility that's available uh, in terms of how you can make things look on the device. I did talk about connectivity, how you can add drivers. Uh, or, or one example being improved charging rates. Um, and also changing behavior of the OS, which is not possible through SDKs, but possible through the customization service. And some of the operational benefits for partners and for, for customers, uh, clearly you know, much more efficiency in terms of the process, in terms of employees who are doing it. Uh, and uh, and, and, and just, just, just optimizes it much better than 
the current scheme of things where it's custom hardware which you buy and deploy and then have to maintain for 10 years or whatever. Okay. Uh, this basically means you can, since Android is a large proportion of what um, devices are being used today and Samsung has a very large share of that, we are using devices in UI which, is all, which already people are familiar with. So the learning curve, for example, if it's a if it's an um, in-store clerk who needs to use a device, you know, the, the learning curve is not as high as if, what it would be if it were a custom hardware with a completely different UX. Okay, so there are three groups of benefits that I thought would make sense uh, for you to hear out. Um, yes, so what devices are supported? So it's important to note that you would see almost all the, um, the recent devices the Note 4 uh, and Edge, which uh, came out recently, the Galaxy S5, the Tab 4, as well as the Active. Uh, we also go on the Note Pro uh, 12 or 2 inches. Um, S4, uh, we say MR, MR is our term for maintenance release. So some S4s, if they've got, uh, gotten a firmware upgrade, then they, they do uh, support them. The same is true for uh, Note 3 and the Note 10.1. And I think it's uh, fairly safe to say that going forward, all the, all the new models that come out will have all the customization APIs. So using the customization SDK to configure those devices should be possible. Uh, a quick comment on the customization service. Uh, uh, this is not limited to any device, uh, but the limitation here is uh, Android version 4.0 and above is uh, what it would require to kind of you know, have that work out. Um, quick comment on resources. So if you guys are interested, you can go to samsungnox.com. There is a tab which will take you to customization. There's a lot of documentation. I think you can download the list of APIs. Um, and if you register, you'll probably go to somebody in this room and you know we'll get back to you and usually within a day you should be set up. There's also a demo application there. Uh, so we are, we, we, we are building global presence um, and we are we, have, we are ready to support in US, Canada, UK, um, Korea, of course, because we are Samsung. Uh, and we have a small team uh, coming up in uh, Vietnam. But uh, you will see that as this gains more traction, we will have more support across the globe. Okay. So that was the end of my presentation. Um, I would like to invite Phil, James, please come up. guys. So um, James Britton is from uh, a company called Mezzo, and he's probably going to show you a demo first. Uh, and uh, Phil Northam is my, my colleague from uh, Samsung Research in the UK. And Good evening. Uh, we've, uh, we've, so James, you go okay. first, and cool. then we'll have a quick, you know, quick session on questions and answers. So um, this is uh, the Tab Pro 12.2 that we've got here. Uh, and this is our kind of our interface for our in-flight entertainment app that we've got. So you probably noticed some of the things that Ryan was saying earlier that there's 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 no actual status bar along the top. And it's actually this one is completely locked down, so it doesn't actually allow the user to come out of the app at all. Um, so a few of those sorts of features are if I press the home button, nothing's happening, or even the menu button at the bottom, still there's nothing happening. Uh, it can't drag down at the top, so it's actually this, this device is basically locked to this app and there's no way to get out of it unless you come out of the, the sealed mode. Um, so some of the things we can do on this one is we've got reading, music, and movies, all the sort of things that you'd usually have on a, an application on an in-flight entertainment. But this is obviously a device which is a lot nicer, it's a lot bigger, and it's a kind of a lot more um, familiar for users uh, to go through. So we've got things like PDFs, that we can open in here. I think we've actually got a, a Samsung a user manual in here. Um, we've also got some, some magazines, and we work with partners to, to bring kind of magazines to the device. And these are really good, and you can kind of zoom in and look around, and they're really nice, clear, and it's a lot clearer screen to look at this than it is to look at one of those really small screens in the back of a, um, a flight. I don't know if any of you guys flew here, but I know we did, and we were using using the screens and having used one of these, this is much nicer to use. You kind of tap and it does what you want it to do. 
Um, we've got some music, so different categories through here. Uh, A to Z, and you can kind of do all the normal things that you can do on an Imply Entertainment. So play some music. We've also got some headphones in, so it doesn't actually allow you to um, play any music unless the headphones are in. So if I take that out and I press play, it just says please connect your headphone. So it kind of does all the things that you'd usually expect. Yeah, this, this is a very important because uh, if, if you're in an airplane, and even if you're in first class or a business class cabin, yeah. and you have 20 of these devices and everyone is powering them up at the same time or playing a movie, you don't want everyone to hear the, the audio. So yeah. that's the reason why the audio will only play with, with the headphone plugged in, and it won't play on the speaker. Uh, we've obviously got movies. So as we've got this device locked down, this actually allows us to uh, put Hollywood early window content on these devices. So they've got the same content that the in-flight entertainment on a plane would usually have. So the latest movies that are out within the last month. And that's very um, untypical of normal sort of in-flight entertainment apps that are on devices. They're usually on BYOD sort of experiences. So you're bringing your own device. And Hollywood won't actually allow you to put any movies like that on those devices because they're not locked down and they're not secure. So that's why this, what makes this one different from all the rest. And then you can play a nice, clear video, which is a lot better than the ones you usually find. So that's kind of it. And we support different languages for the audio, for the UI, and all these sort of usual things you'd expect. Obviously, it's in a secure environment. That's pretty much it. Okay. Okay, so it's a Samsung tablet. Yeah. Replacing what you have the, as this in-flight entertainment system, which is at the back of a seat. Yeah. So that's what that's, the use case is here. That's what we do. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, uh, James, thanks very much for the demo. Uh, maybe quick introduction about yourself and Metso as a company okay. and what you guys do. So um, we're based in the UK, uh, Metso Global, uh, and we've got a, there's about a team of seven of us uh, that all work at the moment. Um, we build applications, but our main one at the moment is this one. Uh, and we obviously work with the guys in SR UK to uh, develop this. And we've worked with them for quite a few, quite a while now. So Phil, maybe a quick uh, introduction from you and what you've been up to. Yeah, I'm Phil Northern. I head up the uh, UK customization team. Um, and as James alluded, we've been working for a few years together. One of the first partners we actually met was Metso who brought us these ideas about um, the customization requirements they needed. Uh, my team is based up, um, is fairly unusual. It's, um, we've got an R&D core and uh, customization consultants, and that, I think, is our secret source, is our ability to, to unlock some of these features or find ways to architect solutions for our partners. OK, thanks. So coming back to you, James, so what are the benefits of replacing an in-flight entertainment system with a tablet? So you've got, um, there's a few different points. There's obviously, these devices are, are really light. There's no cabling really that's involved. The only thing we have in the back of the seats is a, a power to power the device. So that's one reason. You've got um, familiarity that you mentioned before. So users already know how to kind of use the application. They already use these sorts of tablets already. So there's the familiarity. Um, the cost savings to both the, uh, the airline um, is great. So you, you've got the initial cost of buying the devices, but these are really lightweight. So you don't have the cabling and things, um, which actually saves you a lot in fuel costs. So you're looking at, av on average, per kilogram of weight, about $50,000 a year per seat is spent. So if you save, um, what, a one and a half, two kilos on deploying this tablet experience, plus the weight saving you gain from not having to put any of the magazines on board, you're probably looking at three to four kilograms per seat is saved. So if you start timesing that up between 300 seats on an aircraft, you can start to imagine the cost savings per year that this sort of tablet experience can actually help you deploy. Wow. And, and, and obviously that translates into fuel costs yeah, for, so for all the decreased fuel, fuel costs. costs. Yeah. Right. Uh, is it true that uh, for every kilogram of weight that is uh, saved in the airplane, it's about 50,000 US dollars yeah. per year in fuel costs? Uh, yes, yeah. so if you're saving four kilograms per seat, it's obviously 200,000 US dollars per seat per year that you're saving. Not to mention all of the um, extra costs, like not having to pay someone to transport all the magazines, 
put all the magazines out and things like that, you're actually consolidating all of those costs. Wow. And, and, and what, about, um, what about certification and compliance? And would, would FAA allow something like this on flights? So um, our current deployment, that we've got um, one in France, and we've also got Virgin Atlantic um, uh, as well. We've actually got in the back of the seats, you just place the tablet in the back. So as the, as the tablet isn't part of the seat, there's no FAA uh, uh, kind of accreditation that needs to be involved. So there's all the cost savings that are involved around not having to do what, what could be months or even years of cost um, of certification. So these are much better to deploy in that way. Wow, just really impressive. Um, how about maintenance? Uh, would, would these be... So you know, maintenance is another... There's a way to ma they'll break down and all yeah. of that, right? So. so compared to a normal embedded device, you'd have to pay someone to come along, unscrew that, uh, and replace the screen or replace any of the parts that are broken. Whereas you mentioned before, in this case, we just take the tablet off the plane and replace it with a new one. And then we can then put that through Samsung's warranty or any sort of other repair facility, get that device repaired off the plane, and then replaced into the system afterwards. So there's also a cost saving involved around that. And also the time, you keep the, you keep the solution rolling and all the passengers are happy because all of the screens are working. Right, right. Um, <clears throat> I, I just noticed when you were showing up the demo that my favorite app is not there. I mean, when I'm on a flight, I usually just stare at the flight map. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because when I'm flying over the Pacific, going to Korea, yeah. I would like to know exactly where I am. You know, closer to Korea or closer to San Francisco. <laughs> so, w w do you have that on this? So, uh, on our system that we've got uh, actually deployed, we do have a flight map. And um, this uh, application allows us to connect to the Wi Fi on board. And we're able to stream from a server all of the flight statistics. So, we can also deploy the map on the screen and also any point of interest information that we've got and that allows us to draw in sort of advertisements and all those sorts of things. But my, but my, I'm sorry, but my Wi-Fi never works when I'm on the <laughs> flight. It's so slow, it's painful. So how, how do you manage that? So with, um, with a system that's got specific devices, we can, we can tweak the whole system to work and be um, improved for actually working with those devices. So we can actually, we've got a streaming solution coming out uh, in Q1 next year. So we're streaming to 80 devices on board, so we'll have a lot greater quantity of movies that we can actually stream to the tablets, along with all of the other information like the flight stats. Uh, okay, so this is being streamed from inside the aircraft yeah. to the device, not from the internet. So, yeah, okay, so we I, have I onboard servers that allow us to connect and get all that information off and stream it on board. Okay, thank you. So uh, move to Phil. So <laughs> Phil, tell us a little bit about uh, customization as a program and when you started, you know, what, what was the vision and, and what did you see in terms of a market requirement? Okay, so uh, probably um, a couple of years ago, we've actually been market testing this for maybe three years. Um, and as I think I alluded earlier, so Metso was one of the first companies to come to us, but many other companies came as well with, with similar, so system integrators came, came to us saying, we've got requirements, they don't fit the standard SDKs, they don't fit the public SDKs, can you do this, can you find a way? And the only way obviously for them to achieve that is to talk to us, an ODM. And as I said, I, I mentioned earlier, our secret source is having those R&D guys who understand architecture and can build these solutions. So we, we've taken that over the last couple of years and we've actually we brought a lot of these requirements together, which is, as, as Ram described, there are basically two solutions now. There's a custom SDK, which covers a lot of the requirements we've seen from a lot of customers. And then there's the, the custom binary for really, really kind of uh, specialist customizations. Um, and, and that's the way we work. we work. Customer requirements are really important. Our roadmap for that SDK is built on customer requirements. So potentially, if as a customer you, you need a custom SDK, for your initial deployment, you could benefit in six months, 12 months, by actually being able to use the CSDK, the custom SDK down the road. Um, and and if, if a system integration partner would want to work with Samsung, uh, what would be the, the right approach or what would be the right process to, to go through this? Uh, well, that's very, that's very simple. So obviously the website, if, um, but since you guys are here, you can speak to me or Ju Young sitting down there who manages the program and will be delighted to sign you up. Thank you for the wave, yeah. <laughs> so, 
uh, and we will happily talk to you about what you need and how we can fulfill it, so either SDK or binary, and work out a way for you to, to actually do your deployment. Yeah, go on. You may do because you may need to use the standard SDK as well. So the, we, we um, sell the custom SDK as a bundle with the standard SDK because you use APIs from both quite often. So yeah, but we can also sort that out for you. It's, it's not a precondition, but I think it would be good, it would be well served if you do it through the seat. Then you have everything that you might possibly need. Okay, so Phil, um, another question. So what kind of industry solutions or what kind of, uh, you know, use cases like this. We've seen an in-flight entertainment system, and that's very easy to understand and see. Where, where else do you see, uh, a, you know, opportunity or, or where the market is moving? Okay, well, yeah, I think you mentioned a few in your presentation. I, I think it's probably worth a couple of highlights I could point to. So James mentioned cost savings and efficiency gains on these, on these products, right? So uh, in retail, we're working with a company at the moment who are uh, working on, um, they sell car parts. And they, every year they print catalogs, those car parts, which you, you pick up in the shop, right? You can go through it, it's several hundred pages. Uh, and they're now swapping that out for tablets, customized lockdown. And they will pay back the, the price of those tablets based on print costs alone within a year. And that's without, without the additional sales they expect from that. Um, Another example, another good example we've had is uh, in um, restaurant business, mm -hmm. where we've seen we've provided MPOS solutions with built-in menu systems and ordering, uh, and there's been a 10% 10, 10 uplift in sales. So some strong, strong at the moment, very strong at the moment is retail. Yeah, that's, that's actually very interesting, the first point you mentioned about, about car parts. So they're taking what is supposed to be an operational cost of printing and shipping, mm. and even if you take the capital cost of the devices and the software and everything, it just pays itself in one year, yeah. which I think is, is amazing. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'd like to come back to you, James. So what do you see as, so when you were first building this solution, and, and we obviously got in touch with Samsung, and, and we, we, we are here together today. But what were some of the benefits that you saw, or some of the positives that you saw in the way we worked together with Samsung? OK, so one of, one of the great uh, benefits that we had was part of the Hollywood accreditations, we needed to work with the OEM. And um, one of the only OEMs that would actually build anything like this was Samsung. So all of the other ones we contacted didn't have anything or needed to build something. So it was great that we had the guys over in, um, in the UK, where we're based as well, to actually go through and build what we needed to build. And we can go to those guys and we can ask them uh, what they could do, what we needed, and we could work out a solution based on that. Um, some of the other good reasons about doing that was it just allowed us to lock down what we needed to lock down. So there were, no, there were no other things that we needed to kind of do on that front. All right, good. Um, so one last question, and then we can probably uh, wind up. So in terms of the, the, the in-flight entertainment system, what are the real benefits of going down this path, of taking off what's in the back of a seat and then you know, putting a tablet? Because I know most people already carry a tablet, right? In, in, in I probably have some content on it, but what's the benefit of this, this approach? So the benefit is actually the, the Hollywood accreditation to do early window content. No one wants to watch uh, a five-year-old movie that they can get down off a normal or a, a BYOD kind of bring your own device onto an aircraft. They're always old movies. So this system allows us to actually do early window content. So the, the content you usually get on the back of an, uh, an airplane seat, and that's, that's the content you really want to see like the latest movie that was out two weeks ago. Right, or, sort of. or TV. Or TV latest shows, latest yeah. Exactly. That, that's the content people want to see. And that, from our experience, is the only content people would even pay for. Right. All the other content they can bring, as you said, on their own device, whereas a system like this would actually allow us to go that step further and put early window content on. It's brilliant. So uh, my next trip, I should be able to see uh, <laughs> A Metso tablet, a yep. Samsung Metso solution on, on a flight. Hopefully, we'll be able to <laughs> get that as far as possible. All right, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for, for coming out to this session. Yeah, I'll just we'll take questions in one second. Uh,
uh, and just, I just want to thank James uh, because uh, he's taken the time and the effort to come here. Uh, he's around in the customization booth, uh, the showcase that we have. So if you guys want to catch up with him, have more questions, you can do that. Um, and Phil will also be around. Um, so if you guys want to come by, yeah. I'll be around uh, here in the room or maybe later tonight or tomorrow at the showcase. Uh, all of us will be available if you want to come and talk. So, so with that, yeah, probably we can take some questions. So since you were first, please go ahead. <laughs> So we have sort of operational processes involved. So you would have thought that these sorts of devices would be a lot easier to steal. And they probably are compared to an inbuilt one. But you can put warnings and say, this device is locked down, and there's nothing you can do with it. So one of the things we prevent is you can't plug in a laptop. You can basically not do anything with a tablet. You can't flash it. You can't do anything. So it's, it is basically useless. Then we can also lock it down remotely on the wireless, on the streaming based one. So even if you took it off, we can actually revoke the license, which completely renders the tablet useless. And we can put the operational process in to say, we know how many devices were given out, we know how many passengers are on board, and before the cabin crew open the door, they can make sure that they've collected all of those devices in. So there's both the operational and the technical side of that. And, yeah, it is, it is basically a brick. All you can do is look at it and see that it's a nice device that you can't use. And a plane is a really good environment because you're locked in until the cabin crew open the door. <laughs> you, you can't get out. So in that respect, for this one, it's, it's really good. You can, yeah, there's obviously the whole, the whole next step with that is the advertisement base that you can do, and then you can spread it further, and you can do the, all of the Samsung connected devices, like you can start giving them wristbands and doing in-flight ordering systems, so you know how many people are on board, and if they want to order a certain set menu, and then you can tell the cabin crew, this, on this seat, this passenger wants this food, and then you can do the whole connected devices. Right. And, and just to uh, extend that, there's also uh, a lot of discussions we've been having with, with partners and customers where even the ground crew, uh, for them to have the ability to have a, a, a device, like a mobile device, and plug it into the aircraft for maintenance and those kind of things, it gets really tricky because you're plugging into the aircraft. Uh, security is a big deal. Uh, they need to make sure that the device is authenticated and there is no unauthorized connection. But that's, that's the future coming down too. So even ground crew will be able to do uh, aircraft maintenance uh, with mobile devices. Yes, sir. Android what? Sorry. For every. Yeah, so that's disabled under the custom binary, I think it is. Uh, is that API? Yeah, so that actually prevents you can go in it'll, and you can click factory reset. And the device just goes, no, it doesn't. So that's also protected. So there's only one way of, there's only one way of doing that. And that's what we kind of flashed the ROM with. Because there's no other way of doing that. Yeah, j just to add to that, uh, in the custom binary service, you can disable all of these things uh, right on the device. So it's just completely 100% foolproof. Um, if you're using a custom SDK, then with a combination of the custom SDK or the standard SDK, and if you're going to have a, a remote management solution, you can disable most of these options. OK. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So eight to ten weeks is kind of a end-to-end a, uh, -end, uh, delivery, right? So on that, we would, if you if we've got a contract and we're working together, we give you test builds to test, right, to make sure what you want works. Right. So wait, you know that that tenth week, 
you should have a binary that fits the purpose that you intend it for. So you can build a test cycle into that. Yeah, the, the 8 to 10 week time frame is more to give you predictability of when you can have the binary frozen so that you can start flashing it onto devices. So, so look at it from that perspective. So you know, it depends. If you need a longer test cycle, we extend that time. Yeah. That's kind of minimum time we do it in. But if you need a longer test cycle, we extend until you're happy, right? Okay. Yes, sir. Um, maybe so, I'll, I'll, yeah, go ahead. Well, that's a bit of a, a, a mixed question, isn't it, from the point yes. of view of two, two kind of solutions and platforms. But SDK doesn't stop um, photo. So you have that part. But then the workspace part. Exactly. You know, so to cover. Uh, the, the, the point is you, you've touched upon a few things here. So you could have a workspace license active on a device. Um, and if that device gets an upgrade, and then now it has all the customization APK, then in theory, yes, you can use the customization SDK and do all these cool things that we've been talking about. But you will have to figure this out from a logistic perspective in terms of where is this device, does this come back to you so that you can plug it into an installer and then you know install the new application that you have, or from an architecture perspective, can you take care of it by doing an over-the-air upgrade to your app? Those are some of the things we'll have to probably discuss. Question from outside the room? You can take them too, no problem. This guy had all the beer. Yeah. Um, any, any more questions? Yes, sir. Yes. Um, James, do you want to? <laughs> I think that's, well, I, I, I think that part of that is answered by the fact that, um, that your boss, who's not here today, <laughs> is happy to work with us <laughs> and, is, and is making a good business out of doing this. And he knows full well that the replacement cycle is different, right? So you know, the, the point of this is custom off the shelf. These are B2C devices put into a B2B environment. and the economics work based on that. So um, Dave, Dave Sampson, the CEO of Metso, understands this. We discussed this, right? And he worked, we work very closely with him and with the sales subsidiaries to make sure that he has the stock he needs and he can, he can time his business right with that stock, right? So he will be talking to our, our UK subsidiary about replacement cycles, end of lifing, what, what devices are up next and what he needs to plan for. That's the, that's the answer I can give you. you know? yeah. Just you showed an example, so I mean maybe they might work, but I mean the example when you build something, I don't know, special rugged uh, additional things around the device, I mean in that case you rather expect that it will be working for a lot longer than like yes. here. So so, 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 quick response in, in addition to that, uh, and, and I'm not necessarily uh, addressing the Metso, the way Metso has done it, but in, in other cases um, where customers are doing things like this, uh, one is that a lot of those customers, particularly in the healthcare kind of a space where there's also regulation involved, so every time you change the device, you have to go through another regulatory cycle. What those guys do is they pre buy all the devices that they think they will need. So, that's one way of solving it. Uh, the other point I want to add is, uh, I don't know if you, if you heard, but recently we announced um, a ruggedized tablet. And when we did that, there are a lot of first, uh, Samsung has done a lot of things for the first time with that device. And one of the things we have done is, I think we have assured our customers for a minimum three year uh, availability to that device. 
and uh, and that that's a ruggedized device uh, it's going it's a water resistant dust resistant you know drop to concrete all those kind of things which you would need in in a in a warehouse or a or you know or, or in a more ruggedized environment including temperature variation so samsung is also trying to go down that path where we will be communicating that this device will be available for x number of years when we release the device so those are probably two things which i could add yeah, and I say um, the example I gave you earlier with the um, the car parts company, right? They're planning for a three-year cycle. I think they're buying up front. They know what they're getting. They pay back within a year, and and they right. have two years before they have to do that replacement. That's what they reckon. Okay. Yeah. Any any other questions? Going once, twice, three. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming. Thanks for uh, listening to us and spending the time. And uh, we'll probably see more of you uh, in the evening and tomorrow. Thanks, guys.